Today we're going to be making a dish that is really close to my heart. As I'm sure many of you are aware, I grew up in South Africa and this is a real traditional South African dish. Today we're going to be making poikikos. This here is the star of the show. It is a cast iron pot and you'll find at least one of these in most South Africans or Zimbabweans houses worldwide. This is one that I've had for more than 10 years now and it is still absolutely perfect and it will last many lifetimes. It is a fantastic buy. It might be a little expensive when you buy it up front, but it's just gonna last forever if you take care of it. And I will show a video in the future on how to take care of this. If that's something that interests you, just let me know in the comments. Now, traditionally, you'd wanna cook this on coal. You don't wanna use gas, but I am cheating a little bit today. I don't have a pit somewhere to actually do the coal. Today's poiki will be a lamb poiki. So I've got a leg of lamb that I've cut up into bite-sized pieces and I've got the bone in there as well. That's gonna add fantastic flavor to this. Essentially what a poiki is, is a layered stew. So <laughs> it's a bit sacrilegious to call it a stew. It's not a stew in the traditional sense. Uh, it's just so much better, but it's a layered stew and I'll show you what that means in just a little while. But the meat, you've got so many choices. If you want to use beef, you can. You want to use lamb. I, I enjoy a good lamb poiki. You can use fish. Chicken's a big one as well. My brother-in-law, Andre, does fantastic chicken poiki, and I'll get him to show you guys his recipe one day as well, because that is awesome. When it comes to vegetables, you can use absolutely anything you like. When I'm doing a red meat poiki, so with lamb or beef, I always will add at least a kilogram and a half of fresh tomatoes. I will add two or three white onions and that's pretty much it. The rest of it could change depending on what's available at the store or fresh from my garden. <laughs> my dad, whenever he used to make a poiki, he'd put so much cabbage on that he'd have to put a brick on top of the pot because the cabbage was just so high up. Now, I won't be using that much cabbage, but there will be a layer of cabbage in there as well. Now, let's look at the real secret of a good poiki. And that is down to the spices. These are the ingredients for my gram masala. Now, ideally, I'd prefer to have whole pieces of things like the cinnamon that's over here and the cloves, but unfortunately, I just didn't have any in stock right now. I only have the powdered. This gram masala is actually great in many other meals. If you just want to make yourself a curried lamb, there's a fantastic way to do it. I would probably add a bit more garlic and uh, some ginger as well when you're doing the cooking, but yeah, this is a great base for that. So you just want to grind it up as fine as you can, and then we'll be ready to start cooking the meat. You want to add about a tablespoon of oil just vegetable oil or any oil you want to use, some lard would be good. Make sure it's as hot as you can see it there, where it's sizzling. And then we start adding our meat. And then in go the spices. Now, you can mix the spices in with the meat before you add them to the, the pot, but it's not going to make a hell of a difference. And this is gonna be about the only time you will be allowed to stir your poiki. So let's just get it all mixed in there, get the spices all over the meat. That smells incredible. So you can see the, the bones I left there. There's quite a bit of meat still on them, but that'll cook off nicely. And uh, some more bone over there. While this is cooking down a little bit, you're gonna stick your lid back on and you're gonna let it cook for about 10 minutes. And during that time, you wanna prepare your vegetables. Once about 10 or 15 minutes have gone by, then you should have quite a bit of juice at the bottom of your pot. I don't know if you can really see that, it is 
quite juicy in the bottom so that's fantastic you want to just spread it out and now we're going to start layering our extra ingredients so first thing to go in we're going to add in our tomatoes as well as our onions and you don't want to stir it you just want to just mix it in to the top there we're going to add about a pint or half a liter of lamb stock at this point you can season to taste you are probably only going to need a bit of salt because there's quite a bit of pepper in the masala that I mixed up earlier so season with a bit of salt be sparing because there obviously is going to be some salt inside the lamb stock that I just added you then want to start adding ingredients based on how long they take to cook generally it's not terribly important but I tend to go with the potatoes at the bottom first so just get those spread out and then go with some carrots then we have our sweet potato this is already getting very full <laughs> there's our squash we're just going to be layering up some cabbage on the top a couple of things that the cabbage does is obviously it's there for some nice lovely cabbage to eat but it also it'll hold the moisture in a little bit it creates a bit of a, a layer a bit of a boundary at the top there's one other ingredients that I haven't actually showed you just yet and before I finish putting the cabbage on I probably should put it and that is some wine now if you don't like cooking with alcohol, I know my sister doesn't like alcohol in her food, then you can use just water. But if you are going to be using water and not wine, then add about three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. So I'm going to be adding about two cups of wine. And then we're just going to continue layering the cabbage. Uh, I laugh because this is something we used to tease my dad about every time <laughs> and it looks like I'm gonna have to do the same thing let me go get a brick my dad's gonna be really proud this time well there we go that's a proper <laughs> family recipe there bricks and all but all we're going to do now is you can see that the it's bubbled up already it's already simmering again so it's time to turn the heat down a bit and let this cook for about three four hours if you can the poiki has been cooking now for about an hour and a half and it's time to check just to see that there is still a lot of liquid and there definitely is i could actually hear it bubbling before so that's another way to check but you can see there's plenty of liquid around there i'm happy with that if however you couldn't hear it bubbling away then I would go and add some water or in my case I'd probably add another cup of wine in there you can add water that's no problem at all you just want to make sure that there's always liquid inside you because if there isn't then it could potentially burn uh, down the bottom there so just make sure there's liquid in there all the time now why do we not stir a poiki well there's a few reasons for it the way I like to think of it is each layer here the, the liquid that's coming up from the bottom all the flavors from the meat is going to push up through all the different layers it comes up to the top and then it sort of sinks down and it's kind of circulating the whole time that this is cooking and it yes it's going to bring some of the flavors up from each of the different layers into the other layers but it's not like a stew which pretty much makes everything taste the same in my opinion this just it comes out so different poiki kos is more than just a meal it's a social event in South Africa you'd spend your entire day around cooking one of these and you'd start at 9 a.m. chopping up the vegetables and the meat and getting it all seasoned probably start cooking at about 11 a.m. Uh, with a view to have it done by about 6 or 7 p.m. that evening all through the day you'd have friends and family coming around and sharing a beer with you and sharing the events of the week you'd have a braai probably in the early afternoon like 2 p.m. that's a barbecue for those that don't know what a braai is and it's just such a great day and it's a tradition I like to keep alive I've been in the UK now for 20 years and I still have regular poikis I really do enjoy it it tastes great but it's also it's that that nostalgia for me as well and my wife really enjoys it she's British 
and she loves it, her family love it. In fact, our next door neighbor is also British and they came around last year for a poiki and they absolutely loved it. And they were asking me yesterday when I'm going to be doing another poiki. So that's part of the reason why I'm doing a poiki today, to show you guys uh, how it's done and also to help out my neighbors who have been craving some, some good old fashioned poiki. So we're just going to let this simmer for a little bit longer. We've probably got about another hour and a half to go and we'll have some delicious food ready to eat. We are ready now to dish up. This is for my next door neighbors. So I'm going to dish theirs up first and you get to see what this looks like. It's been about four and a half hours now that I've been cooking this. Every now and then I've come and checked on it, made sure that there was some liquid in there and we can see how that's really come down quite a bit. I can see there's still some liquid on the side so that is perfect. If you let this dry out it could very easily burn underneath and that's the last thing you want. So time to turn this off and let's get some food into a bowl for next door because I'm sure they're quite hungry. Uh, we're going to get some cabbage in there of course and oh this looks and smells incredible. So I'm trying to get a little bit of everything in here. Of course, we'll get some meat from the bottom there. Oh, that meat is looking fantastic. Falling apart, nice and juicy, just perfect. Well, I wish I could offer you all a bowl of this because I'm sure you'd love it. So that looks a bit of a mess at the moment. But uh, I'm going to take that over to next door and I'm sure they're going to love that. And then it's time for my wife and I to have our dinner as well. Anyway, I really do hope you give this a try. There are so many different variations of how you can put this together. And I'll share a couple more recipes in the future with different types of poikis that I'm sure you guys will love. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next video, stay safe and stay spicy.